Welcome to part two. We're going to finish our examples here. Uh, let's go back and talk about turning points. If this equation is x to the fourth, then how many turning points can you have? You can have at most one less than degree. So if that's to the fourth degree, I can have at most three. So I'm going to put less than or equal to three turning points. Here, if it's x to the fifth, I can have at most 5 minus 1, which would be 4 turning points of my graph. The zeros, that is where you can have at most the same as the degree. So here, the number of zeros, I can have less than or equal to 4 of them. Here, I can have less than or equal to 5 zeros. Now, we need, we're going to find the zeros here. I'm going to switch to a pencil. Uh, this function, if I want to find the zeros, I'm going to factor it first. I'm going to pull out a common factor of x squared. So I'm going to have x squared plus 5x plus 6. This remaining factor goes down again. I can factor that again. And I need a factor of 6 on the end, so I need a plus 2 and a plus three, everything's positive. Don't forget this value. So I have three zeros. I have x squared equals zero, which gives me x. I have x minus two equals zero, which gives me a negative two. And x plus three equals zero, that gives me negative three. So I have three zeros. Let's factor this one. The common term here would be x cubed. So if I factor out a x cubed, I think I'm going to pull out a negative. Oh, I can pull out a 3 as well. So let's do a negative 3x cubed. That's going to leave me with x squared minus 6x plus 9. That factors. I have my negative 3x cubed on the end. That's just x minus 3x minus 3, right? Which gives me a 0 of 0 and 3, positive 3 if I set x minus 3 equal to 0. Well, I only have two zeros. I could have had 5, but I only have 2. I'm going to have less than or equal to 5, and that's what I was talking to you about. Let's talk about the multiplicity. Okay? At, at 0, okay, at x equals 0, how many times is there a 0 of 0? Remember, for the multiplicity, you look at the exponents. So how many times is 0 a 0? It is twice. So it has a multiplicity of 2. And if it's an even multiplicity, remember then it's going to touch at the graph. Let's look at x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. How many times do they appear as zeros? Well, they just have an exponent of 1. So they have a multiplicity of 1. And so that point on the graph is going to cross. Okay, all this will make sense in a minute when we magically go up and draw the graph. Okay, let's look at this one. If x is 0, that has a multiplicity for this function of how many zeros do you have? You have 3. And that's an odd multiplicity so it is going to cross. The other 0 of 3 has a multiplicity of 2, because you have one of them, you have two of them. So it has a multiplicity of 2, an even multiplicity, so it's going to touch. Now with all this information that you just gathered by looking at that equation, we can now go up and we can make the graph. All right, we're just going to sketch this out. We're going to put zeros at 1, 2, 
3 and at 0. And we know that both ends are going to be up, so I'm going to start up high. I know that at 0, right here, it just touches. That's important. It crosses at negative 2 and 3. So I started high. I know that I cross at negative 3. I'm going to turn somewhere. I cross at negative 2. But then at 0, it touches and then ends back up. So both ends are up and we crossed, crossed, and touched. And that would be a, you know, a very similar drawing. Now we don't know the minimum, we don't know the maximum, relative min or max, but and we can determine that by plugging in points, right? You could plug in negative one and see where it is. You could plug in negative two and a half and see what the function value is. But this gives you a very good estimate for that graph. Let's try the odd function here. All right, I have two zeros at zero and three. I know that this is odd and it starts up high and it's going to end low. I cross at 3, but I just touch here. No, I'm sorry, I cross at 0. I cross here. I start it up high. I'm going to cross at 0 and then it just touches at 3. And then it, en it ends up, the behavior on the right side is down. Again, if I wanted to find the exact value here, I could plug in to an, or one and a half and I could get that value. But it gives you a good representation of the idea of that function. Okay, well, let's go and do an application when you come back. That's the second half of the worksheet. So I'd like you to get that ready. It's this application. I'd like you to get that ready to cut out and put in our uh, notes. Example three is kind of fun, and this is really good application, real world. Uh, you very often are given data. You're out on the field, you're collecting numbers. You need to know if the data that you collect is going to be a quadratic function. Is it going to be a cubic function? Is it going to be, um, you know, fourth, fifth root? You need to determine what the function is so that then you can project. Um, and predict what values will be in the future. And so it's very important that you are able to process the data and figure out the equation to represent, the function to represent that data. So for example, let's take some numbers here. This is a town's growth or decline, so be it, over the several years. And you can see this over the years from 2001 to 2008. This is the population of the town. Now we're not going to put in the years. Very often we put in 1 to represent 2001 or 2 and 3 and etc. So we're going to do that and then we are also going to put in the population for the different levels at, at those years. So I have spelled out in detail how to enter this data and to figure out what kind of an equation it is. So we're going to walk through this quickly together. First thing you have to do is enter the data into the statistics part of the calculator. The statistics part of the calculator is right here under delete. It says stat. So I'm going to hit stat and I want to edit. I want to put something in. So I hit enter and I get my list. Now if you have things on your lists already you could scoot up to highlight the list, you hit clear, and it will clear that list for you. So my first list is going to be the years. My second list is going to be the populations. All right, I'm going to pause it while I enter this data. I've entered my data. Now we want to turn the diagnostics on, on to in this particular function of the calculator. So down here at the very bottom of your calculator, you'll see the word catalog in blue. It's above the zero. So we're going to go second catalog. And I want to turn the diagnostic on. So I'm going to take a shortcut. I could sit and scroll through until I get to the D's. Or I could just do alpha D. The D is right here above the matrix. It's right here. So if I do alpha D, it just takes me to the D's. 
It didn't work. Wait a minute. Catalog takes me to the D's. And I want to scroll down to get to diagnostic. Now you'll see diagnostic off, diagnostic on. Obviously you want diagnostic on, you select enter. And it says on. You hit enter, it's done. That's good, you need to see the word done. Now hit Y equal. You need to make sure that that part of the calculator, because now you want to take the data and you want to put it into the graphing part of the calculator. So you need to make sure that's empty. We need to turn the stat plot on so that we can plot our statistics, our data. Stat plot is right here in blue. So we're going to hit second, stat plot, and we're going to say yes. Right now it's off. See how on is blinking? Do you really want to turn it on? Yes, you hit enter. So it's on. Now go second, quit. Okay. Now we are going to want to zoom into the statistics. So we're going to hit zoom and we're going to uh, pick stat. You'll see, there it is, number nine. Zoom statistics. Well, look at there. There is all of my data. All right, now at this point, you're looking at the data, you need to guess what type of function it is by the nature of the graph. Do you think it's just a quadratic? Is it a cubic? Can you tell how many times it's turning? Um, you may have to do this several times to figure it out. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate one. So we're going to go back to stat. We're gonna move over to calc. We want to calculate one of the equations. You pick which regression you think it works, that you think worked the first time. All right? I think it looked cubic. So I'm going to go down and pick number six. Okay, you're picking this that you want to pick. You hit enter. And now it's going to say, are you using list one? Yes. Did you use list two for the y's? Yes. And I'm just going to keep pushing enter, and there it's going to give me my cubic regression. Now let me talk about what it's doing. It's giving you the basic function, and then it's telling you what A is, what the coefficient A, what coefficient B, coefficient C, coefficient D. All right, I don't want all of it to look like this. I want you to write the equation. Now this R squared down here, that's the diagnostic you turned on. That's good. Okay, so right here, write the regression, equa re regression equation if needed, because sometimes you're going to need to write that down, and I am. I'm going to write it down right here, and I'm going to round, so I'm going to say y is 10.02 x cubed minus 176.32 x squared plus... 807.47x plus 4,454.79. All right, that's my D. So I'm going to stop there. Now this has a re uh, diagnostic. This has regression of 0.89. Okay. That correlation coefficient is not real good. We want that to be close to one. Okay, we want it close to one. So it's not really, really close, but it's okay. All right, now we want to practice moving that. So I want to move this equation into the y equals. All right, I can see that I'm going to run out of time. So you practice this on your own with these steps, but we will go over this again in class. All right, so I'm going to hit Y equals, and the video. I'm just going to let the video run and run out on me. I hit VARS. Here's the magic button right here where it says VARS. VARS, my data is in number five, statistics. I move over to an equation. I hit enter, and it magically moves it for me. And if I graph it, look at there. And you want it to hit most of the points. All right, it does not look like it hit all of those points. It hit some of them, but not, not.